All right, friends, we're going to jump into 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And in this chapter, Paul's going to talk about what it means to be a true apostle. Chapter 4, verse 1. This, then, is how you ought to regard us, as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. So Paul's talking about not his sense of innocence in, in sin. He knows he's a sinful man, but he knows he's not done things wrong against them. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. That's where our focus on praise should be, is who do we receive praise from? Men, are we pleasing mankind? Are we looking for others to praise us? Or are we seeking to be praised by God? Verse six, now brothers and sisters, I have applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, do not go beyond what is written. Then you will not be puffed up in being a follower of one of us over against the other. So there's no benefit in being a leader or a follower of Apollos or a follower of Paul. They're just leaders who are servants of Christ. Verse 7, for who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. You have begun to reign and that without us. How I wish that you had really had begun to reign so that we also might reign with you. For it seems to me that God has put up apostles on display at the end of the procession, like those condemned to die in the arena. We have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to angels as well as human beings. We are fools for Christ, but you are so wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honored, we are dishonored. To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty. We are in rags, we are brutally treated, we are homeless. We work hard with our own hands. When we are cursed, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure it. When we are slandered, we answer kindly. We have become the scum of the earth, the garbage of this world, right up to this moment. Paul is telling the people at Corinth, the local church, that being an apostle is not an elevated position of fame or power. It's not celebrity status. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. These apostles are struggling to survive. They're working with their own hands and doing ministry. They're providing for themselves financially and serving others in all of their time. They are utterly disgraced. They're mocked and ridiculed. But believers aren't in enduring that same kind of trial or tribulation. So Paul's saying this whole role of being an apostle, it's not something that is elevated in celebrity status the way that we would see preachers or teachers today. Verse 14, I am writing this not to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. There we see the heart of Paul, that pastor heart. He doesn't want them to not know what's going on. Even if you had 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. So Paul has planted this church by the grace of God. And in the power of Christ Jesus, he's leading these believers. And he wants them to follow after the example he set, not the example of the world. Verse 17, for this reason, I have sent to you Timothy my son whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my ways of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. So these believers have forgotten how to live. And so Paul sends Timothy to them to help them get back on track. Some of you have become arrogant as if I were not coming to you. But I will come to you very soon if the Lord is willing. So Paul's preparing them that he's going to come and deal with them personally. And then I will find out not only how these arrogant people are talking, but what power they have. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, 
but of power. What do you prefer? Shall I come to you with a rod of discipline or shall I come in love and with a gentle spirit? So Paul's basically laying it down. When I come and talk to you, it's kind of like a parent. When I get down there, when I get to you, do you want me to come all kinds of upset and angry and having to correct your behavior because you're not doing it on your own? Or are we going to have a pleasant experience? Are we going to get to enjoy each other's company? And so you really get to see Paul lay out before the church in Corinth, fix this guys, whatever needs to be fixed, you need to fix it on your own. Because if you don't fix it, when I get there, I'm going to fix it. And you see that father attitude of Paul because he spent so much time in Corinth establishing this church, loving these people, teaching these people how to live and how to walk in the grace of God. And they're not doing it. And Paul's a little ticked off at them. And so he's like, I'm sending you Timothy. Listen to him, learn from him because he's doing what I need you to do. And you need to do it that way. And you need to do it before I get there. And so we see Paul give the nature of true apostleship, what it's really like to be an apostle. It's not all it's cracked up to be. And then he's giving an appeal and a warning to the people to fix what needs to be fixed. And that, my friends, is 1 Corinthians chapter 4.